In this video, we are going to provide a brief introduction to the CQRS pattern and how the .NET library mediator helps us build software with this architecture. Here, we will talk about how to integrate CQRS and mediator with the ASP.NET project and also how to use queries. In the next video, we will cover the rest of the topics – commands, behaviors and notifications. If you prefer reading about it and also want to download the source code, feel free to visit the article on the Codemaze blog site. The link is in the description below. The Mediator library was built to facilitate two primary software architecture patterns – CQRS and the Mediator pattern. While similar, let's spend a moment understanding the principles behind each pattern. To explain CQRS, let's use the diagram from our article. CQRS stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. As the acronym suggests, it's all about splitting the responsibility of commands and queries into different models. If we think about the commonly used create read update delete pattern, usually we have the user interface interacting with the data store responsible for all four operations. CQRS would instead have us split these operations into two models, one for the queries, read operations, and another for the commands, create, update and delete operations. The CQRS pattern makes no formal requirements of how these operations occurs. It could be as simple as a separate class in the same application, all the way up to separate physical applications on different servers. That decision would be based on factors such as scaling requirements and infrastructure, so we won't go into that decision path today. The key point is that to create a CQRS system, we just need to split the reads from the writes. So, what CQRS allows us to do? It allows us to break free from the constant balancing act between read and write systems and give each system the equal design and consideration it deserves, without worrying about the impact of the other system. This has tremendous benefits on both performance and agility, especially if separate teams are working on these systems. After CQRS, let's talk a bit about the mediator pattern. To explain it, we'll again use the diagram. The mediator pattern is simply defining an object that encapsulates how objects interact with each other. Instead of having two or more objects take a direct dependency on each other, they instead interact with the mediator, who is in charge of sending those interactions to the other party. We can see that some service sends a message to the mediator, and the mediator then invokes multiple services to handle the message. There is no direct dependency between any of the blue components. The reason the mediator pattern is useful is the same reason a pattern like inversion of control is useful. It enables loose coupling, as the dependency graph is minimized and therefore code is simpler and easier to test. In other words, the fewer considerations a component has, the easier it is to develop and evolve. Now that we've been over some theory, let's talk about how Mediator package makes all these things possible. So we have a project created with the latest .NET framework and now we have to install a single package. Let's open the package manager and install the Mediator package. Now, right after the installation, we have to configure our mediator package in the program class. So let's navigate there. And let's call builder.services.addMediator method. Then we add a new config variable and with its help call the register services from assemblies method where we provide the type of program and call the assembly. Now Mediator is configured and ready to go. So at this point 
it's time to add our controller. Let's navigate to the controllers folder, choose add controller, let's select API, empty controller and add a name products controller. With our controller in place, let's just first modify the route attribute from a generic controller parameter to products. Now, to be able to use the mediator in our controller, we have to add a private read-only iMediator mediator field. The iMediator interface allows us to send messages to mediator, which then dispatches them to the relevant handlers. But we have to mention something. From the mediator version 9.0, the iMediator interface is split into two interfaces, iSender and iPublisher. So even though we can still use the iMediator interface to send requests to the handler, if we want to be more strict about that, we can use the iSender interface instead. This interface contains the send method to send a request to the handlers. Of course, for the notifications, we should use the iPublisher interface that contains the publish method. That said, we are going to use the iSender interface instead of iMediator and also let's rename the field to sender. Also, let's generate the constructor that initializes the field and let's make it one-liner. Now we can continue. Usually, we'd want to interact with a real database. But for this video, we're going to create a fake class that encapsulates this responsibility and simply interacts with some product values. That said, let's open a solution explorer, create a new class and name it product. We'll need two properties here the public int id and the string name. Now, let's add another class and name it fake data store. Here, we start with the private static list of product and name it products. Then, Let's add a constructor. We want to initialize our products list with a new list of product and add a new product with the ID 1 and the name test product 1. We can copy this row and paste it two more times. Let's modify the ID to 2 and the name as well and also id to 3 and the number in the name to 3. Now we need a couple of methods. First, let's add the public async method that returns task and let's name it add product. It will accept a single product parameter. Inside the method, we're going to use the products list and call the add method with the product as an argument to add a new product to the list. Also, since our method returns no value, we will await task.completed task. The second method is also going to be public async, but it will return task i enumerable of product. Let's name it get all products. As an implementation, we'll just await task from result and provide our products list as an argument to return. At this point, we want to return to the program class and register this fake store as a service. To do that, we'll call a builder.services.addSingleton method to register this store as a singleton service. Now that our data store is implemented, let's set up our app for CQRS. To start with it, let's create three new folders in our solution. First, 
let's add a new folder with the name commands. Then let's do the same and name it queries. And finally, the last folder with the name handlers. We'll use these folders throughout the exercise to separate our models. Now, let's talk about most common usage of mediator requests. Mediator requests are very simple request response style messages, where a single request is handled by a single handler. Good use cases here would be returning something from a database or updating a database. There are two types of requests in mediator. Ones that return a value, queries, and ones that don't, commands. To start with, let's create a request that returns all the products from our fake data store. In the queries folder, we're going to add a new class and name it get products query. Let's make it a record and inherit from the I request interface that accepts I enumerable product as a parameter. This simply means our request will return a list of products. That's why the I request interface has that parameter. Then, in the handlers folder, we're going to create a new handler class to handle our query and name it get products handler. To make this class a handler, it needs to inherit the I request handler interface. We also have to provide two parameters for this interface the get products query, the query that we want to handle, and I enumerable product as the type we want to return from our handler. Now let's implement the interface and leave it as is for now. Since we are going to use the handler to return the products from our data store, we have to add a new private read only fake data store fake data store field. Then let's implement a constructor and let's make it a one liner. At this point, we can move on to the handle method implementation. We can see that it returns task I enumerable product and has two parameters, the request of our query type and the cancellation token. The only thing we are going to change is to make it async. Now, in the method body, all we are going to do is return all the products from our store by returning await fake data store dot get all products. If you want, we can make it as expression body method. To call our request, we just need to add the get products action in our products controller. So let's add the HTTP get attribute first. Then we need a public async task action result action with the get products name. Inside the action body, we will return all the products by calling await and then using the sender field and the send method where we provide a new get products query instance as an argument. Lastly, we will return an OK result with our fetched products. That's how simple it is to send a request to Mediator. Notice we are not taking a dependency on fake data store or have any idea on how the query is handled. This is one of the principles of the Mediator pattern and we can see it implemented firsthand here with the Mediator package. Now, let's start our application and let's use Postman to test it. We have prepared the request and all we have to do is to send it and we have our result. This proves that Mediator is working correctly as the values VC 
are the ones initialized by our fake data store. To continue, let's create another query that is going to be quite useful to us in the next video where we will cover commands. To do that, we have to create a new query record. So, let's navigate to the Queries folder, create a new class, and name it getProductByIDQuery. Let's make it a record, provide an int ID parameter, and it needs to inherit from the iRequestProduct interface. From this, we know that our query will return a single product as a result. Now, in the fake data store class, we have to add another method. Let's make it public, async, task product, and name it get product by ID. It will accept a single int ID parameter and return a weight task from result where we will extract a single product from our products list with a single link you method. As we remember, for each query we have to create the handler. So let's navigate to the handlers folder and create a new class. Let's name it get product by id handler it must inherit from i request handler and we have to provide the query get product by id query and the return type product now let's implement the interface we also need our private read only fake data store named fake data store, the constructor, and let's simplify it. Also, we'll make this method async and return await fake data store dot get product by id method with the request id as an argument. We can simplify this one too with the expression method. At this point, we can navigate to our controller and add a new action. We'll add a new HTTP GET attribute, but this time provide two parameters. The ID of type int as part of the URI and the name for this action, get product by ID. Next, Let's create public async task action result get product by id action with a single int id parameter. Inside the action, we'll create a product variable and await the sender.send method with the new get product by id query instance. And ID as an argument. Finally, we return OK with our product. Great! Let's start the app and use the Postman request to test this. And there is our result the product with the ID1. So, that's it. As we said, in the next video, we will cover the other features commands, notifications and behaviors. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you like the video and want to support us. You can also use the bell button to get notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in the next video. Until then, all the best.